Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Mikkel Show, where we help uh, people find answers that have chronic health issues, chronic health problems, um, autoimmune conditions. So um, for you who don't know me, um, I uh, practice functional medicine and I'm also a board certified chiropractic neurologist. And um, today we are going to talk about osteoporosis and osteopenia. And I'm kind of excited about this. You know, I recently went to a uh, conference um, and, you know, even with all of this coronavirus stuff coming on, uh, you know, there was a conference and there was a little over a hundred of us there. And um, I like these conferences. It's like, why, why are you going to a conference when all this stuff is going on? Um, no, it's great. You know, the thing is, is I'm going to this stuff because I can learn more uh, of the latest cutting edge information to, to help you guys better. And, and that's really so key. If we have the latest information, we can do the most for you. Um, so that, that's really crucial. And of course I tested negative, so I don't have any, um, bad viruses. So, um, all right. So, but one of the topics in this conference that I really enjoyed was the section on osteoporosis, osteopenia, and some of the um, some some important information with that. I mean, some of it gets a little technical. I won't go into that as much, but just we want to get down to the basics of what you can do uh, the best because really, for osteoporosis right now, there really aren't any answers. Um, and you know, there are some medications out there that are recommended. But if you actually start to look at those and look at them in depth, you will find that those medications, number one, have a side effect list about a mile long. Um, but number two, they don't really um, increase real bone density. What they do is they can make a change to the outer part of the bone that actually makes the bone look better on imaging or on a test, but the actual uh, bone itself is no less uh, susceptible to fracture. In fact, one of the side effects of these medications is jawbone necrosis, where actually the bone in the jaw, which is one of the areas of the bone that turns over the fastest, has you know cells divided and our jaw goes through bone cells quickly. Um, this These areas of higher bone metabolism start to degrade faster because of the amount of pressure that the jaw takes on a daily basis with these medications. And that's probably why if you talk to any dentist about these types of drugs, they're going to tell you, don't take them because they'll go in and look at people, take an x-ray of their jaw or start looking at them dentally and they'll notice that, hey, the whole jawbone is uh, pretty much gone. So uh, scary stuff. And again, you know, not saying that happens with everybody, but um, do read your side effect lists. <clears throat> Ask your pharmacist, be educated about these medications. And that's not my goal here is to put down medication. My goal is to give you some some other answers, other ways of, of looking at this um, that I feel are, are important. So let's let's dive right into this. Um, I actually I put together a little uh, presentation today. So let's let's go into that. In fact, let me make it more the, the full screen here. So um, what is osteoporosis? And you guys can read this. I mean, it's the difference between porous bone and uh, normal bone, and that's really what is occurring here. The bone's becoming more porous. It's more susceptible to fracture uh, risk, and that's a that's a major problem. In fact, if we look at it on imaging, it looks like this. It looks kind of uh, bad looking there. So um, you can see the difference in the in how porous the bone gets. I mean, the bone has normal pores in it, but as they get bare, we're more at risk for fracture. So at one point not too long ago, it was thought that this is just normal aging and, um, you know, but now we're finding, hey, this is not really normal. It's not aging. There's even some studies out there that suggest it's an autoimmune process, but osteoporosis um, can be prevented. Um, now, when we see it more in its autoimmune form, it's like, hey, I'm doing all the right things, but it's it doesn't seem to be getting under control. And that's why we've got to look at other factors that come into play with it. Um, and how do they usually look at it? Usually you'll get your uh, bone density scan. They're gonna look at the T-score, and which is from the World Health Organization. And, and it'll give you the different classifications, you know, normal to osteopenic, 
Osteopenia means you're just getting lower on bone density or bone mass. And then full blown osteoporosis, that means you're beyond a certain point and it's definitely more serious and your risk of fracture really increases. All right, so what is bone? Bone is this, it's constantly being remodeled. Our bone changes day after day after day. It's going through this constant process. It's not like we just have a bone, there it is, it's done. Uh, and, and it can't change. No, it's, it's a, these bone cells, even though they seem like rocks, they are changing day after day after day. And how does this occur? So <clears throat> there's these cells. <clears throat> there's two types. There's called osteoclasts <clears throat> and osteoblasts. Osteoclasts take away the old bone. Osteoblasts lay down new bone. We need this transfer to occur on a regular basis to keep bone healthy. You got to get rid of the old dead bone cells and get and put on the new good bone cells or of course the bone will get more fragile because if if this is out of balance um, there's a problem and that's what we'll see with some of the medications they're laying down new bone just over the old bone <clears throat> so you're not getting rid of the old bone um, and uh, that will make things look better on imaging but you still have all the old bone underneath that's going to break just as easy so um, now those osteoblasts, like I said, come in and they fill in these cavities, um, you know, areas where bone is, is less. Um, and, you know, when, when we're kids, um, yeah, we get more bone added on than old bone is removed. And of course that makes sense because we're growing, our skeleton's growing um, and our bones are becoming more dense and larger. So then we hit about 30 years old. Um, and, uh, you know, then we start to get more of this osteoclastic activity where we get bone breakdown because our bone kind of reaches its maximum size there at that point. And then, especially in women, because you hear about this more with women, between about 45 to 55, we start to get menopause. And your female hormones are tied into this bone uh, mass and, and bone health. Um, now you'll read a lot about where estrogen is the key one with bone density. Actually, it's not. Estrogen maintains bone density, but it doesn't help increase bone density. It's actually progesterone that helps to increase bone density. And again, some doctors will prescribe some female hormones if you're low and that's okay to a degree. But what happens when you're a woman, you know, you, you basically, um, when, when you go into menopause, when you're a woman and you go into menopause, when your ovaries and uterus retire, or if you, um, have a hysterectomy, um, the thing is, is there's a backup system and it's important that this backup system is working. And that backup system for all of your hormones is your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands make hormones that turn into estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. In fact, in women, your sole source of testosterone is your adrenal glands, but they also make estrogen and progesterone from other hormones. So that's your backup system. Otherwise, every woman would go into menopause and feel horrible. There are many women who go into menopause and they're like, I really didn't notice anything. I felt fine. And there are some women that'll say, gosh, I went into menopause. I feel horrible. It's like a truck hit me. Now I've got this symptom, the hot flashes and this and that, you know, so the thing is, is what's the difference between those? The women who didn't have symptoms, they had good adrenal glands. Their adrenal glands are really functioning well, no problems there. Most of my patients, not good adrenal glands. So again, if you don't have good adrenal glands, you've had a lot of stress in your life, blood sugar issues, um, all kinds of factors that affect your adrenal glands. Um, then yeah, you're going to have a problem with female hormones. And sometimes the situation is bad enough to where you do need some hormones. And if you do, of course, try to go more towards the bioidentical hormones, um, which don't have the problems like the synthetics. The, the thing is, is when you hear about these studies of estrogens causing problems, people taking estrogens and leading to cancer and things like that, all those studies are done with synthetic hormones. None of those studies are done with bioidentical hormones. That's a whole nother topic. Not saying that everybody needs to be on these and I don't believe that everybody needs to be on them forever. Um, I, my goal would be to see those adrenal glands do the job, but some people just can't get there.
So let's get back to the um, presentation here.
All right, so the buprenorphine, um, crucial, the uh, vitamin A, D, uh, K1, K2, also crucial. Um, I actually like, um, it's a DA, K1, K2, it's a supplement from a specific company that um, they put them all together. Um, and I love the way that he's designed this supplement and the oil they put it in is actually an algae oil, which doesn't go rancid like other oils. Um, fantastic stuff. Um, the Aperflavone, there's some different sources I have, um, but again, it's just finding the dosage for you on that. And then another thing that I didn't really talk about that I think is, is extremely crucial, especially if you're towards the osteoporosis side, is um, a therapy called PEMF, pulsed electromagnetic frequency. PMF. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. There's different machines out there. I, I went through quite a few and, and researched quite a few before I picked the one that we have. Um, uh, you know, this machine initially was made to uh, help heal uh, ununited fractures. Um, it was called bone stimulator. Um, and that technology, of course, somebody said, hey, if this can stimulate bones to heal, what else can it do? Um, and now there's all kinds of things PMF has been found out to do. It's based on electromagnetic frequencies, which is interesting because that's a lot of the things that we deal with um, here at the clinic. But the thing is, is um, certain frequencies, it, it basically, th this is going to produce like a gravity field. It's electromagnetic and we can dial it in even to uh, like the Earth's frequency, 7.83 or other frequencies, and you can actually feel it. And that's what I feel is important with the um, PMF. You, you need to be able to feel some of that pressure, some of that pulse, because that is that pulse um, is really creating uh, this, this antagonistic pressure against the bones that increases the healing process. Actually, at a cellular level, PMF kind of supercharges the cell. They call it cellular exercise. So at the bone level, it's helping those bone cells to get more nutrients in and get and, and actually at the same time push any um, uh, toxic elements out. So it's just accelerating the uh, metabolic process of bone. So you lay down more new bone and, and get rid of bad stuff. So I really like the PMF on, on top of all this. And if you kind of put all these good things together, I see no reason why you can't retest that bone density scan and see improvement with that. Um, overall. And then of course, combining that with exercise that we talked about. And again, that may vary depending on your health condition, your health ability with the exercise. All right. I hope everybody's enjoying this so far. Um, I had a, a couple of things here. Um, uh oh, somebody saying we aren't having sound. I hope the sound uh, turned back on because um, that would not be good if we did not have sound. Um, if not, then we may be re-recording this. So, okay, so hopefully the sound came back. I'll have to rewatch to see. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this today and got some great information. Again, um, I feel that this um, information was crucial. So if there was no sound, um, I may uh, redo this one and find out what our technical issue is. Okay, I hope everybody has a wonderful day um, and, um, uh, God bless to everyone. I will talk to you soon. Oh, and don't forget to share us on uh, Facebook and YouTube. All right.